Okay, I think we're good. Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to another stream. So uh, continuing the Godzilla marathon as it pretty much is. Uh, we are hopping into 1965's Invasion of the Astro Monster, also known as Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, also known as Monster Zero, or simply known as, well, okay, no, not simply known as, uh, The Great Monster War in Japan, or Giant Monster War, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, this is the sixth movie in the Godzilla series, and uh, before we get started, just a few little announcements. Uh... A couple times on my Twitter account, I've been teasing a post uh, that I would be reviewing a movie that is considered one of the very worst ever made. I actually did see that movie a couple days ago, and just a couple days ago, after seeing that movie, I recorded that review, I was so proud of it, I made it all the way to the end, and I realized that this was not plugged in so that was about 27 minutes of my time wasted because i didn't plug in the mic uh, so don't worry that review is coming it should be up sometime this week i want to try to record that review again right after i get off the stream and uh without further ado uh let's just oh oh one more announcement first of all before i get to that announcement i want to Welcome everyone who is in the chat right now. Uh, so we have four people currently watching, but in the chat at the moment, we have Justin Toner and Razor Bike, two regulars to the stream. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Oh, yeah, that was a real, real tragedy what happened there. And I was so passionate about that review, but uh, it you'll never see it, or at least that version, uh, because I will record a do-over after I get off this stream. I just realized that I don't have any water with me. Uh, I'm going to have to step out for a second and grab my water. First of all, uh, Gzilla100, welcome to the stream and the chat. Glad you could join us. Uh, what movie, you may ask? I cannot say. Uh, I cannot say that what movie it is. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, though, you might have already got an idea of what the movie is. So, uh, I got one more announcement before I get to it. I need to grab some water, so uh, hang on one second. Okay, I am back, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I just had to put away the uh, Logitech cam. But, yeah, uh, people are wondering, um, uh, what do I think of the Snyder Cut? Uh, I will simply say this. I was wrong about questioning its existence. It's still going to be terrible, though. There's nothing that Zack Snyder has done in the DC Extended Universe that has convinced me otherwise that he can make a good movie. Uh, but who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, we got one more announcement before we get underway. Uh, I am close to 4,000 subscribers. As of now on my YouTube channel, I have 3,990 subscribers. So we are only 10 away from getting uh, that magic 4,000 number. And if I manage to get 4,000 subscribers uh, during this stream, which I wanna do, I wanted to make it a live uh, event where I uh, get that stream. Get that stream. Uh, I need some water desperately. Got some more people in the chat there. Spider is Prime and Daquan Tate. Welcome guys, I'm doing good. Glad you could join us. But anyway, uh, if we could get to 4,000 subscribers while this stream is going on, then I can, then I will uh, do the Godzilla victory dance for you guys once the movie ends. Because 
Nothing screams uh, internet fame than a grown adult doing something ridiculous. Um, so we are going to get to that. And uh, if you guys don't get this channel to 4,000 subscribers by the time this stream ends, then no dance. That's that's tough reality, though. But that's what you guys would get if you don't help me to get that uh, number up. Uh, welcome, future filmmaker three nine four eight zero reviews. Uh, do exact do exactly what he says, folks. So uh, that's all in terms of announcements. Uh, Without further ado, let's actually just hop into this right now. Now, once again, uh, I should point this out. Uh, for the movies here, I am doing the Japanese versions. I am watching the Japanese versions of all the Godzilla movies. Although, I might make an exception for Godzilla 2000, but we're a ways from that movie. But if you have the Criterion box set, or if you have a Criterion channel... Uh, the English dub version is available and it's about the same length as the Japanese version because they kind of took the uh, Japanese version and just plastered the English dub over. So the scenes where the Exaliens are speaking in their own language is not uh, cut out of that English dub. So if you have the Criterion Blu-ray or the Criterion channel, then you can watch whichever version you please. But if you have the classic media DVD, then you might want to pick the uh, Japanese version because those scenes of the Exaliens talking in their own language is cut out. So that's the only thing I'm going to be doing. Uh, when will I do Q&A live streams again? I mean, these are kind of like it. I mean, we're watching the movies. Um, and... Um, yeah, we're watching the movies, and then I'm kind of asking questions as it goes on. So this is kind of a better version. It's just we're doing something on the side. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's just hop into it now. Again, if you have the Criterion channel or the Criterion box set, either version will do. But if you have the classic media DVD, then uh, you might want to pick the Japanese version. Or if you have the VHS tapes of this movie, then uh, I don't know what else to tell you. So without further ado, let's just start the movie now. Razorbike just said the English dub for Godzilla 2000 is the only version I own. So I might consider uh, an exception for Godzilla 2000, especially considering that the English version is actually superior to the Japanese version. And the only way you can actually watch the... Um, the Japanese version in America is through the Sony Blu-ray. But we'll get to that movie when we get to it. God, this march is so cool. It's funny how this started off as the military march in the original Godzilla. Then it turned into the battle march in Battle in Outer Space. And now it's made its final destination in Invasion of the Astro Monster. And one interesting thing about uh, the Japanese version is that Akira Takarada is credited first above Nick Adams, uh, as opposed to the American version where Nick Adams is credited above Akira Takarada. So that's that's an interesting comparison there. Sort of a weird opening credit sequence, just like with Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, where it's just random still frames of um well right here a close up of a satellite uh, a bizarre selection of stuff for the opening credits in 1960x a mysterious new world dubbed planet x was discovered in our solar system what does that categorize like 1960x that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense No, he doesn't. Uh, Nick Adams, uh, I mean, he filmed all of his scenes in English, and 
in the American dub, it's actually his voice. But for the Japanese version, he was dubbed over in Japanese. And the same thing happened with uh, Frankenstein versus Baragon, which came out uh, earlier that year. Yeah, Nick Adams, sadly, is part of that uh, like group of actors from the 50s and 60s that just didn't, like, they tra died tragically young. Um, like, Nick Adams, uh, James Dean, Natalie Wood, uh, Marilyn Monroe, just so many tragic, so, such tragedy amongst those actors. I missed like I, I like that little moment right there when Akira Takara is asking for her for his sister, and you can just see to the side, she's just like, no, no. I would like to take uh, the audio from the English dub. And just kind of splice it with the Japanese version. That way it looks like um, Nick Adams is actually speaking English in the Japanese version. Sort of like how Don Fry is not dubbed over in Godzilla Final Wars. Because Nick Adams and Akira Takarada really have a good dynamic in this movie. Uh, we'll get to that line later, uh, Shea Smithers. Uh, first of all, welcome to the stream. Uh, glad you could join us, but uh, yeah, we'll get to that line. Now, what use does an invention like that have outside the Lady Guard portable alarm? Okay, there you go. Yeah, I forget this actor's name here, uh, but I, I like him a lot. Uh, like the ca the characters he plays in a lot of the Toe science fiction films, uh, like it's so good. And this is probably my favorite of his characters. <laughs> I, I I hate that in the uh, English version. Um, I hate in the English version. That line of, um, and she thinks my device is loud, or in the classic media DVD, uh, her, she's louder than my device. I hate how it's changed to, now who could be calling me on the telephone? And it does kind of bug me that his voice in the English dub is just so high-pitched like a, like a stereotypical nerd type character. Sort of like Leonard in Big Bang Theory. Which, speaking of Big Bang Theory, I actually debated whether or not to uh, do this live stream tomorrow since uh, HBO Max debuts tomorrow and all of the Showa-era Godzilla movies except for King Kong vs. Godzilla are going to be on it. So, uh, but I didn't want to disrupt the schedule here. That's a clever uh, transition right there. I mean, there, there are two clever transitions in this movie. One where we have a shot of the P1 in outer space, and then uh, it, like, it transitions to the walls of a restaurant where it looks like outer space. And there's another transition coming up followed by a great line of dialogue that I love. Guys, if you ever make, uh, make a big business deal or get some big promotion, 
you take your girlfriend or boyfriend, depending on your preference, to the nicest restaurant possible, because that will impress them quite a bit. Let's check on the uh, subscriber count. Uh, oh, we are 3,993, so we are only seven away. We are only seven subscribers away, and that came in at the perfect time uh, as Kumi Mizuno's character came in. She is probably uh, one of the main reasons why this movie, probably besides the original Godzilla, is one of the most um, famous in the United States, at least when it comes to the original series. Yeah, Miss Namikawa. Um, like, Miss Namikawa has that look where she, like, sort of like more American actresses, where, like, she's just, it, it's kind of hard to describe, but Honda really loved working with her. Oh, I like this line coming up. <laughs> that is, that is such a brilliant transition right there. Um. Your brother said he'd stand on his head if I ever sold my invention. Well, you better start practicing right now. And then we cut to both of them upside down. That's the power of clever editing. I got some questions for you guys. Um, anyone out there who's a space nut uh, um, or into uh, the solar system and whatnot, was there like a dwarf planet or something that was named Planet X? Because I remember reading, like a long time ago when I was a kid, when I was a kid, like there was a planet beyond Jupiter. No, not Jupiter. <laughs> um, that's in this movie. Beyond Pluto, where, um, where that was named Planet X. So it was... So was there actually a planet or a dwarf planet for a time that was called Planet X? Yeah, 36 was not like a really young. I mean, outside of um, like Nick Adams, I've only ever seen him in smaller roles in American films like Rebel Without a Cause and Pillow Talk. But he has charisma. Like, sadly, the only starring roles that I've ever seen Nick Adams in is this movie and Frankenstein vs. Baragon. That is such a 60s style spaceship right there, the P1. If Akube's score in this movie is just so, um, there's something about his score, like whenever it's set on Planet X, that kind of reminds me of, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride, I mean, uh, there's parts of the Sherman Brothers music for, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like when you're in the caves, that kind of sounds like, um, if Akube's score whenever they're on Planet X. I think it may have been one of the exoplanets that was discovered sometime in the either the late 2000s or early 2010s. That could be it. Yeah, I've heard about his TV show, The Rebel. I think that's where he's most famous from. <clears throat> but I've never seen it. <laughs> Look at that little um, toy figurine. Just coming down the uh, the platform. You 
you know, I I think that's a compositing. That had to be a compositing shot. Huh? Uh, but a lot of the compositing shots in this movie are actually pretty well done. Huh? Really, was uh, Nick Adams uh, good friends with Elvis? Didn't know that. <laughs> you see, you stole my joke, uh, Razor Bike. You stole my Monty Python joke right there. It's only a model. Shh. Let's check up on the subscriber count. Uh, oh, we lost one. Went down from 3,993 to 3,992. Boo. Yeah, we don't talk about that movie to quantitate. We'll get to it eventually, but we don't talk about it. You know, it always, I know um, they just uh, laid out uh, Earth's gravity compared to Planet X's, but I always love it when, um, when uh, characters are in outer space and they have flags and they're just breezing in the wind like it's nothing. You know, there there should be a lot of um, red flags uh, when it comes to Planet X and its inhabitants. Uh, I mean, we'll get to that later uh, once the big reveal of the movie comes up. Uh. Okay, we're back to 3,993. So, again, back to seven more, guys. Seven more subscribers. And there's... Uh, we are six, 17 minutes into this movie. Okay, Razorbike pointed out something uh, very key to this movie that I will talk about uh, when we eventually get to... Um, once we eventually get to those moments. Here, here's another great piece of filmmaking here where uh, Akira Takarada is walking through this set and the lighting is so perfectly done. Like, like right there, like, like 
the lights go are dim to reveal a dark room. Then they come up to reveal like a big room with several doors. Lights go down and then the hallway lights turn on. Like this movie is just I mean I think it's either 8 or 7 on my list of favorite Godzilla movies. But there's just a lot of um, great filmmaking, technically, with this movie. What if Space Godzilla came from Planet X and he was their Godzilla? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Is this really Toho's third alien species, Spider's Prime? So there's, there's the Mysterians. Then there's the aliens in Battle in Outer Space. I didn't see Gorath, but were there aliens in Gorath? Oh yeah, those the the the, the costumes for this movie, uh, especially for the aliens, are pretty ridiculous, but. I don't know. I love it for that. What a surprise. What a surprise that Monster Zero is King Ghidorah. I gotta be, okay, I gotta be totally honest. Um, uh, one of the brilliant things about these Godzilla movies having too many titles is that when I rented this movie from Blockbuster with the title Godzilla vs. Monster Zero... Like, I'd been familiar with King Ghidorah already, so I assumed that Monster Zero was a fourth monster in this movie. But, uh, was a little bummed when, um, uh, it was revealed to be King Ghidorah. So here's the suspicious thing about this movie. Um, clearly Planet X is a desert of a planet, not like Tatooine or Jakku, but it's like there's no civilization on pl the surface. So you'd have to be suspicious that King Ghidorah would want to attack pretty much nothing. And the alien race is just stuck underground the whole time because that's where they officially live. Unless this, of course, is a moon base and um, their home planet is elsewhere. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Justin Turner, why? Well, like the characters would have to be suspicious on why Ghidorah would bother with pretty much a dead planet. Huh? Um, and the fact that the aliens themselves are so uh, humble. Uh, no Spiders Prime. Ghidorah's theme did appear in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. OK, 
okay, I guess I need to get around to seeing Goreth at some point, but I don't know how because it's not available uh, like on DVD or Blu-ray in the States. Now, if I if I'm correct, I think Mothra was also going to be in this movie as well, uh, but they cut her out either due to budget or because of the fact that it would just be a direct repeat of Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster. But I would like to think, like the Exalians are clever enough to not call for Mothra's help because Mothra is so pure. And the twin fairies would really be up to some, like, would really know that something's wrong with the presence of the Exalians. Uh, could we actually have the cure for coronavirus before you guys got a cure for that? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Justin Toner. Um, they would have a difficult time controlling Mothra, and because of the twin fairies, they would know something suspicious right off the bat. Uh, you know what? At this point... Um, I I think since uh, Godzilla King and the Monsters like confirmed that Ghidorah was from space, then aliens wouldn't be too far fetched. I mean, there were, I read some theories that um, Charles Dance's character from King of the Monsters and his uh, organization were actually aliens themselves, uh, which is why they had no problem at all uh, with Ghidorah being released. So. That that wouldn't be too much. I don't know. Like, like uh, that. If you made Charles Dance's character an alien, then that would be uh, that. That would kind of fix my issues with why this group of people are so stupid to release Ghidorah. Oh, really? I haven't watched the dubbed version of this in a while, so I didn't know it was a cure for everything. I may have forgotten that it was a cure for everything. Yeah, there's just something a little too suspicious about everything that's going on. Like right down to the um, the uh, leader's laugh, as Shay Smithers puts it, to um, 
like just how they know where Godzilla and um, Rodan are to something else that we'll see eventually. No, I have not read the uh, Marvel comics where Godzilla fights the Avengers. And I've seen the uh, I've seen panels of it, but I've never actually read them. <laughs> you know what's the point of those um i'm wondering what's the point of the cyclops visors huh? and why is it the men that are always wearing them not um the millions of miss namikawas <laughs> Oh, I, I, for those of you who have not seen this movie, uh, we'll, we'll get to that point later on. Yeah, it does. It kind of bugs me uh, watching Nick Adams uh, dubbed over in Japanese. But that's that's my preference. Let's check on that subscriber count. Hasn't changed. We're still where we are. <laughs> the day of uh, nick adams and i i've said this before but nick adams and akira takarada really have good chemistry here and i criticize the uh the sub the seahawk crew in king kong versus godzilla but um uh for being terrible but i think like with Nick Adams' case and Russ Tamblin's case in War of the Gargantuas, if they're like actually train American actors that are trained in America, then um, then they can give off good performances. I mean, their chemistry like does show if um, if they if the two of them got along well uh, while they weren't filming.
It's interesting that like the Godzilla theme, like da 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 da, is not in this movie. Instead, it's a weird da 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 da, which it's not the same. Well, also, um, Atira, Atira, Akira Takarada has been known to um, be pretty fluent in English as well. So I think that made that might have made their dynamic work a little better. You're going to brag about your amorous adventures? We kind of hear the classic Godzilla theme in Destroy All Monsters in segments, but not as frequently as uh, the last few movies, King Kong vs. Godzilla to Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Those flying saucers. <laughs> like, that that's the sign right there that you have to be more suspicious about uh, the intentions of the Exalians. Considering that they had a flying saucer hiding on Earth this entire time. Two flying saucers. <laughs> Yeah, you you don't see like those old flying saucer designs anymore. Like th that just screams uh 1950s 60s sci-fi. Three so three flying saucers now. And apparently they've been hovering over uh all night. Okay, that's... I can't tell if that's a composite shot or if they actually built that. I mean, that, the, the close-up shot was, but the long shot... Okay, that, that they clearly built. That can't be a compositing shot. But you guys were just hiding out on Earth without their 
without permission. Friendship day. Yeah, I don't, I really don't see the point in those uh, Cyclops visors. Or shades, because visor is something else. Yeah, visor is something totally different. <laughs> uh, well, those UFOs hauled ass. <laughs> Let's check on the subscription count again. <laughs> that those UFOs just move fast. Three thousand nine hundred ninety-four. Only six more to go before we hit four thousand. That's got to be the only explanation um, that these shades look cool. And yeah, the the Planet X aliens really are pale. There's Godzilla. With a droopy lip. Yeah, that is a weird uh, prop, Godzilla prop. But this music right here, um, if you're watching the American version, uh, this music here plays during the film's opening credits, which I think, I actually think works well because it gives them, I mean, the Monster Zero March is awesome, but having this music play in the opening credits gives the movie a more, like, ominous feel to it. Like, there's just something about... sort of unsettling. But I, I think it works out well. Cobra Star Green! Hey, welcome! Welcome to the stream. Yeah, uh, you guys in the chat right now, um, you guys should check out um, Cobra Star Green, uh, his YouTube channel right there. He does a lot of, uh, he does some streaming, does some pretty uh, good videos beyond just movie reviews. And he's appeared on Double Toasted several times. <laughs> yeah, one thing you'll never, you hardly see in uh, Japanese science fiction films is a kiss. Like, we cut to the very end right there, but, um, like, it's rare you ever see, like, a couple kiss. You never see uh, Emiko or Ogata kiss in the original Godzilla. Uh, and you never see so many other uh, couples in the Godzilla series ever kiss. The only other time in Japanese science fiction that I could think of where the two characters kiss, or at least in Toho's catalog, is um, Matango. But Matango has a very, has definitely a more mature edge to it. That that would be a weird movie to do a, um, do a watch along of. Uh, we gotta get those Patreon. Uh, counts up before um, before I could do uh, watch-alongs for other movies beyond Godzilla or the MCU. Uh, that, 
Thank you, Cobra Star Green. Uh, let's actually, I know I just checked on it as uh, Godzilla and Rodan were being sucked out, but oh, lost another one again. Whatever. Hopefully we get to that 4,000 because again, guys, if you help this channel get to 4,000 subscribers by the time uh, this movie ends and I cut the stream off, then that means you get to see me do the Godzilla victory dance in this very tiny room that I'm in. But it, that, that'll be a sight to see, I think. Oh, Matango is great. I did a review for it back in 2016. And I think it's one of the more interesting Toho science fiction movies. Because it's not really a monster movie as much as it's a, I guess, psychological horror film. Like, it is a weird movie to describe but i think it i think it's great okay so one little uh thing that's worth noting about this movie in particular and somebody just brought it up in the chat a long time ago uh, let me see if I can find who mentioned this. Uh, um, Razorbike mentioned that uh, out of all the Godzilla movies, uh, this one features the least amount of screen time for Godzilla, like under six minutes. So mainly because of this movie here. Uh, I don't want to hear anyone talk shit about um, Godzilla not being in the 2014 movie that much. So I don't want to hear anyone else complain about that too little Godzilla is a criticism. Now, if, now if your criticism is there's not enough Godzilla, but everything, like that's going on without Godzilla is not good, then I could understand that. But by just saying there's not enough Godzilla, therefore the movie sucks, not really a criticism that I abide by. And how far are we into this movie? Because Godzilla showed up. We're 44 in minutes into this movie. I'm sorry, 45 minutes. But it'll be a little bit longer before Godzilla actually does anything. <laughs> I love I love this character so much. Okay, subscribers back up to uh, three nine nine four. So again, six more. Yeah, it's weird that some of the <laughs> well, he got caught quick. Um, yeah, he got caught quick right there. Um, yeah, it's weird that some of the Exalians are wearing shades when they're not wearing those Cyclops uh, shades. They're wearing regular sunglasses, but some of them aren't that aren't Miss Namikawa. So that's bizarre. I love this moment here. <laughs> Nothing beats a good old trap door. We can hear you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've questioned a lot of the movie's logics uh, during these watch-alongs, but like, it's, it is one of those things where it's like, just go with it. Like, yeah, just go with it. Now, were those stairs always there? This is the same set. Uh, back when we were on Planet X originally, but I don't remember those stairs. 
Okay, that... It looked like Godzilla had a really long neck right there in that one shot. And now it's back to normal. Like, this is... This is just so bizarre. Huh. You know, it's funny that um, Fuji, Glenn, and the Doctor uh, need spacesuits in order to survive out in Planet X's surface uh, because uh, there's no oxygen out there because, you know, space. But Godzilla and Rodan don't need it. They can breathe in space. Makes about as much sense as, um, what's her name? from Superman 4, uh, where Nuclear Man just uh, brings her out into outer space and she's fine to breathe. She's perfectly capable of breathing. Oh, shit. Jay Smithers said something that I didn't even think of. Huh? Like that Godzilla prop where he's stuck in that little bubble, it could be the same prop that they use for Godzilla flying. Huh? In um, Godzilla vs. Hedorah. That one there. I wouldn't be surprised. Godzilla and Rodan are still immobile right now. It's um, 49 minutes into the movie. And Godzilla's finally doing something. And so is Rodan. You know, um, usually when you take a character in outer space, that's pretty much the series giving up. And it's like, look, we don't have any other ideas to do, so we're just going to do outer space. And the Godzilla series manages to tackle that before its 10th movie. Like... By Godzilla's third movie, he's already fighting King Kong. And by Godzilla's sixth movie, he's already in outer space. So. And obviously, like, with 29 movies after this, or 28, if you don't count the Roland Emmerich Godzilla, uh, the series still kept going. Let's check the subscriber count as these monsters are fighting in space. Five subscribers away, guys. Let's keep it up. Let's get to 4,000. Oh, yeah. Godzilla started using his atomic breath on Ghidorah this time. <laughs> as he didn't at all use the breath on Ghidorah in the last movie. Heh. <laughs> Okay, here comes uh, here comes the dance, guys. If you get if you guys want me to uh, do that, you got again. You gotta get me a four thousand subscribers, and I currently have three thousand nine hundred ninety five. So if you want to see that dance again, but done by me, then uh, let's get that subscriber count up. I think that dance, if I'm correct, I think, I think it was Tomiyuki Tanaka that, um, that approved over the dance. Okay, um, uh, that's what Wikipedia here is for. Um, okay, the dance was suggested to, um, one of the actors of the movie. Um, is this who I think it is? Oh, the uh, the actor who plays the commander of Planet X 
actually suggested to Eiji Tsuburaya uh, that Godzilla victory dance. Um, but Haru Nakajima and Ashiro Honda were against it. So, so uh, no, the dance was not improv'd. Uh, it was suggested by one of the actors, and um, Haru Nakajima himself was not on board with it. So, made me wonder how he felt uh, having to actually do that dance. Okay, now, now I have a theory, because um, there's no way that all of the natural-born women on Planet X look identical. Uh, and they all look like Kumi Mizuno from the 60s. Like it, I think that has to be, um, I think that they're, they're grown in a lab somewhere. Well, why were you hiding out in our lake on Earth without our permission? Because your punishment will come later. And you all will suffer for it. Three thousand nine hundred and ninety six, guys. Let's keep going. Let's keep bumping those numbers. I, there, there were shots in um, Mothra. There were shots in um, the past Godzilla movies where um, Godzilla's atomic breath was created through optical effects. But, um, but not as prominent as um, it would be with the rest of the series starting here. Well, I mean, there's a third seat, so in that sense, it's superior and coincidental. So was there, were they seriously just going to leave Godzilla and Rodan on Planet X? Or was there any sort of plan to bring them back to Earth? Like, 
let's say the Exalians weren't scummy and they their intentions were good. Was there ever a plan to try to bring Rodan and Godzilla back home? Yeah, he's been missing. I think, for me, uh, I've been on record saying this, but Ghidorah, I think, is the better movie than this. Because it's, I think because Ghidorah is the movie I can recommend more to somebody who's not seen a Godzilla movie. Because he, with in order to see Invasion of the Astro Monster for the first time, you kind of need to get used to some of the other movies before that, before you just jump into the only Godzilla movie where he's in space. And plus, the uh, human story in Ghidorah is a lot more accessible. Sometimes it's uh, more interesting than the monster stuff. <laughs> Oh, this, this is so sad. Like, just a big applause. A huge applause for the fact that they got the cure for cancer. And the only thing that's missing from this segment is uh, Ashton Kutcher popping out of nowhere saying, You got punked, bitch. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where where's Ashton Kutcher at? Has it really got... Okay. This might be a little too extreme uh, for realizing you just got played by a bunch of aliens. Like, mass rioting? Um, I mean, I could understand panicking, uh, but... That's an angle of the movie that I wish they would have explored a little more, but whatever. Yeah, the the, the Planet X uh, aliens or Exalians have always been trolls in both times they've appeared in this franchise. And we'll get to that second appearance whenever we get to it because it's going to be a while. 3,997, guys. Three more. 
We have got uh, about 30 minutes left of this movie, so let's try to get to 4,000 before the movie ends. Okay, I never really noticed this until now, but I always thought that uh, Glenn had a red gun. I didn't notice. It never occurred to me that they were just overheating the gun to where it's red hot. And... and nobody saw that. Dude, the rats, you stinking rats, what did you do to her? That, yeah, somebody mentioned that line later on. Like, it's, they didn't, like, just gun her down, they evaporated her. There I go between, um, there we go with these trying to recommend atomic weapons. Dude, close that window. Why is the red, like it, it. I'm puzzled why there's so much like red dust that comes out of uh, any explosion that the aliens come up with. I was going to say, close that window because the debris is going to fly towards you. Okay, so... They're monologuing. So I guess they're just having Godzilla and Rodan chill. I don't know if I'd want Godzilla's atomic breath because like it's it's radiation not fire so I couldn't really heat anything up like I would just irradiate everything that's and that's something I just don't want This is a pretty fancy beds for a jail cell, or at least the sheets and pillow. Well, okay, maybe that's not a pillow. Huh. 
which should lead to some clues that uh, there's no sound. Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, Kira Takarada is still alive, and he's, he's. I think he looks pretty good for his age, and yeah, that uh, interview with him uh, on the Criterion Collection set uh, was actually uh, for the original Godzilla before the Showa era set came in. So Glenn is a scientist now. Ooh, sorry, guys. Let's check that subscriber count again. We made it! 4,000! I, I wish I could play... I wish I could play uh, Celebration from Cool and the Gang, but uh, YouTube would not let that fly. But yeah, we did it. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this, even while we are in the middle of a stream. Thank you guys for helping me get to this point. Uh, hold on. I need to brag. Uh, yes. <laughs> Justin Tony says I have to do the dance, but we're going to finish this movie first. Oh, hey, hold on, folks. So is it nighttime now or did the lights just turn off? Which, and if I'm correct, the subtitles in the uh, classic media DVD is that lying bitch. Which you don't really... I don't think I've ever heard that word used in a film in the 60s. <laughs> wow, they ha they have high pitched screams. Huh? Sorry, I I know it's unprofessional for me to be on my phone, but I gotta 
I'm doing an Instagram story um, bragging to everyone that I uh, made it to uh, 4,000. Dude got punched the hell out. Huh? Yeah, there are actually several movies where Godzilla has less screen time than in the 2014 movie. Uh, King of the Monsters, actually, from last year, has, he has less screen time in that movie they did in the 2014 movie and yet everyone gives king of the monsters a pass for godzilla screen time i don't get i just don't get it blood everywhere hey, that was that was um glenn and that was Glenn and Tetsui's blood everywhere. Nah, it'd be a, a downer of a movie if it was them that got killed. The next day. So it's a damn convenience that um, his device ended up being a MacGuffin because who knows what it would have been used for if this situation didn't happen. Now here we get our big giant um, monster rampage sequence. Oh, oh yeah, Jaws comes out on 4K not just next month, but next week. Look at that puppet off in the distance. <laughs> Thank God he had a suit right underneath that lab coat, huh?
Oh yeah, one thing that this movie um, set a terrible precedent for, like, is um, stock footage. I mean, I'm not at the point yet in this movie where the stock footage shows up. But, um... But later on, you'll be able to see um, uh, the fact that this movie does use a bit of stock footage for the destruction scenes. Got hit right in the head. Okay, all these close-ups of Godzilla's foot just smashing buildings there's a funny uh gag reel somewhere in the um bonus features of the criterion set where if the shot lingers long enough uh you could see the rod that's holding uh godzilla's foot oh well, there goes those cannons Yep, that 4,000 number is still there. And there's the, there's the conclusion of that little story arc. That little pat on the shoulder. Uh, Fuji and Tetsuo are good friends. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong could be terrible. There, there's always a chance that it could be terrible, but... Uh, I have my fingers crossed that it will be good, but... Again, we gotta get rid of this uh, pandemic before we can actually... Um, focus on new movies coming out. See, there's stock footage of Rodan right there. That's not stock footage, but with Rodan landing on the ground, that was clearly stock footage because the Rodan suit looked different and was more articulate. And there's Ghidorah causing all kinds of chaos, like he does. I like how this shot of Ghidorah uh, after he lands just causing chaos is shown in uh, a few episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's one of my favorite moments in any cartoon series where they'll just randomly show like live action footage from a movie. The fact they got away with showing Ghidorah a couple times is kind of perplexes me. There's stock footage of Mothra. <laughs> yeah, the very worst thing this movie set up was um, the trend of using stock footage. But luckily, it's not as bad here as it would be in... Uh, some other movies that we will get to within the next few weeks. <laughs> Rodan's just hopping up and down.
Yeah, Rodan really isn't flapping his wings as much as he is just hopping up and down. <laughs> this is the only time in the entirety of the franchise where Godzilla and Ghidorah are on the same side. It's easy to tell what stock footage and what was filmed for this movie. Well, I mean, it's just stock footage for the destruction scenes, which I can I can forgive them for, but what they do um what they do in uh Godzilla vs. Gigan is uh, and even All Monsters Attack is inexcusable. But Oh, uh, you know what? I can't say inexcusable because there are there are reasons for that, at least for Godzilla vs. Gigan. Yeah, the stock footage was a necessary evil. Huh. You know, I'm sure they were just tilting the camera for those shots and the actors were just faking falling back and forth <laughs> oh, all right I um okay just just a toner have you not seen the 90s gamma trilogy uh, wait for you to answer that question. And, uh, what, what's the question you have, uh, Mr. Bond? Mothra versus Godzilla at the bottom. Invasion of the Astro Monster, uh, in the middle. And... Ghidorah the three-headed monster at the top if we're just counting those three movies yeah the, the Heisei Gamma trilogy are some of the best uh, monster movies from Japan period like not just as a monster movie but just as a movie in general because it doesn't matter the genre great movie is a great movie They sure are missing that house. <laughs> oh, if you're throwing in the original Mothra, then... Um, the original Mothra trumps Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Look, that's a cool shot right there where all three monsters are off in the distance and in the foreground you've got the military. There's the theme. 
There's that Monster Zero March. I like how Ghidorah is just kind of bobbing up and down. <laughs> yeah, the strings are... One of the heads is clearly caught on the strings. Oh, there was a mistake there. When Godzilla fell, if you look to the left side of the screen, Rodan's wing was still there, so... Whatever. Now they're all having a seizure. Yeah, they are still missing that house. These are clearly not the same tank operators in Shin Godzilla, where they are on point with their hits. Although for not hitting the house, they sure did a good job of crumbling it from the inside. <laughs> Invincible, huh? Yeah, tell that to your uh, flaming ship. Mothra is in my top 100 of movies, period. So that's why I rank Mothra above Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, and Mothra versus Godzilla. And there goes the house. No thanks to the Japanese self-defense force. It was just a self-destruct button. Yeah, we were going to the future of 2004. Oh, that shot there. Yeah. And Ghidorah is still, like, on the ground. And Godzilla kicks a rock. <laughs> now more monster mayhem. Huh? Okay, you could, like... Yeah, there were some shots there where you obviously saw the strings, but... For most of it, uh, they do a good job at hiding the strings that support Ghidorah. <laughs> There's Godzilla, like, doing boxing, <laughs> sizing up. Huh. <laughs> 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 So the suit actor playing Ghidorah just basically fell backwards onto Nakajima. 
Oh, I like I like this moment right here. Rodan gives Ghidorah no Ghidorah. Rodan gives Godzilla a lift, and then they all tumble into the ocean. That, that that is a tidal wave. Suck at King Kong versus Godzilla. Your tidal wave when your tidal wave and earthquake when Godzilla and Kong fell into the ocean ain't shit. Why wasn't Ghidorah the three headed monster in my top one hundred favorite movies list? Because there are uh, several other movies that I like better than Ghidorah. That, that's the best answer I could give. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So I guess they're go. I, I don't know. That would be it. Like it's like, can you send someone else to do that? Like they went through enough hell. Eh, that's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. Um, thank you guys for helping me get to four thousand subscribers. Let's see if that number is still there. It, it jumped down to 3,999. But it's going to bump up to 4,000 anyway. Um, so I, I, we hit 4,000 during the stream. As promised, I would do the uh, dance for you guys. don't really have enough room, but hey, a promise is a promise. So let's, uh, let's do this. Just want to make sure I am uh, in frame. Okay, I think that's... This is this is the best you're going to get from me in this small room here and uh hope you guys appreciate it. Okay. Things I do for you. Ooh, I'm just going to make sure nothing's going to fall. There. There you go. Godzilla jumped four times doing it. That's what you get. <laughs> four jumps from me. Uh, yeah, that is Invasion of the Astro Monster. Uh, don't worry, like, nothing's broken. Um, maybe one, I, maybe once this, uh, pandemic is done and we're all able to go out, um, then I'll do, probably do a better version of it. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was the movie. Thank you guys for, um, tuning in and not only tuning in watching the movie chatting with me and amongst yourselves but also thank you for helping me get to 4,000 subscribers I want to try to get to 10,000 subscribers before 2021 no encore you are not seeing that again uh, luckily you guys could just go back and loop that clip again and again or if any of you know uh, how to work gifts or create gifts you can make a gif out of that so there you go that's my present for you you're not getting an encore until further notice <laughs> but yeah um yeah thank you guys for helping me get to 4,000 subscribers i want to try to get to 10,000 uh before 2021 comes around and uh once again like i said uh several other times uh, these watch alongs for the godzilla series and soon the marvel cinematic universe are uh for you guys because uh we're in the middle of a pandemic if you want to see more watch alongs uh, um like exclusive watch alongs for other movies uh, um and you really like what i'm doing for um in terms of youtube content then 
again, go to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. And for only $1 a month, you can, um, yeah, for $1 a month, uh, you get access to exclusive watch alongs. We are still at three Patreons. Three patrons want to try to build it up even more. Um, come on, guys. You guys got me to 4,000 subscribers. Uh, let's try to get uh, at least to 10 Patreons. Patreons. 10 patrons. But again, if you cannot uh, support the channel financially through Patreon, then that's fine. You subscribing to the channel... Uh, is uh, good enough and the fact that you share my content with everyone else out there and helps me it helps me get uh, that subscriber count up and uh, you know without further ado uh, Thursday will be a live watch along for Ebira Horror of the Deep also known as Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster which is definitely a step down from this movie from the last a couple movies in the series, but uh, I don't totally hate that movie. So we will get to that movie when we get to it. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.